Everyone in the village laughed the first night they saw it, because it did not look like a bed, it did not look like furniture, and it certainly did not look like something a sane man would sleep inside, because what stood in the corner of the wooden cabin looked like a narrow wooden box with a lid, tall sides, and barely enough space for a grown man to turn his shoulders, and when the door was closed it looked so much like a coffin that people whispered about it behind his back, joked about it at the tavern, and told each other that the cold northern winters must have finally frozen his common sense solid. But the winter they were entering was no joke because this was northern. Scandinavia in the late 1700s, a place where winter lasted most of the year where wind cut through walls like knives where fires burned day and night and still failed to keep the darkness and cold from creeping into your bones and where people often woke up with ice on the inside of their windows and frost forming on their blankets while they slept. The man who built the box was not rich, not educated in any formal way and not trying to invent anything new because his name never entered history books but his idea did because he was simply a carpenter and farmer who was tired of waking up shivering, tired of burning extra firewood he could barely afford and tired of watching children and elders get sick from the cold that settled into the house long before dawn. So instead of building a bigger fireplace or thicker walls, which he could not afford, he built something strange, a wooden sleeping box attached to the wall just long enough for his body lined with wool straw and animal hides with a small opening for air, and a door that closed tight because he believed something very simple, that most people ignored which was that heat does not disappear, it escapes, and the less space you give it, the longer it stays with you. When his neighbors first saw it they laughed openly, calling it a death box, a burial chest, a coffin for a living man, and they said he would suffocate in his sleep freeze faster or wake up stiff as a corpse, and some even warned his family that sleeping in such a thing was unnatural and dangerous because no man was meant to sleep sealed away from the room. But that first night, as the wind howled outside and the temperature dropped far below freezing, something unusual happened. Because while frost formed on the walls and the fire burned low, the man slept through the night. Without waking once from the cold without shivering and without adding a sing single log to the fire, and when morning came he stepped out of the box warm rested and calm. While others in the village woke up with numb fingers and aching joints, what none of them understood yet was that this coffin was not a symbol of death at all, but a weapon against cold perfected by generations. Before him quietly passed down in northern Europe used in farmhouses, fishing huts and mountain homes, and forgotten only when people assumed bigger rooms meant better living because what happened next would force the village to stop laughing and start paying very close attention. And as the cold grew worse and the nights grew longer, the box would prove something that shocked everyone who had mocked it something measured not in comfort but in temperature itself because the difference inside that wooden coffin would soon be impossible to ignore. Within days, the rumors changed tone, because people noticed something strange that could not be explained away as luck or imagination. Since while everyone else complained about sleepless nights, frozen feet, and aching backs, the man who slept inside the wooden box moved through the mornings with energy, clear eyes, and steady hands. And when asked how he was feeling, he simply said he slept warm, very warm, warmer than he had in years. What they did not realize at first was that his sleeping box followed a principle older than modern insulation. Because the bed box, known historically as a box bed, had been used across Sweden, Norway, Finland, and parts of Scotland for centuries, not as a curiosity, but as a survival tool, because heating an entire room was expensive and inefficient, but heating the space around a single human body was not. Inside the box, the air volume was small, the wooden walls slowed heat loss, and the thick fabrics trapped warmth close to the body, which meant that once his body heat warmed the space, it stayed there, and according to later historical measurements made in preserved box beds. The temperature inside could remain 25 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the surrounding room throughout the night. That meant that while the cabin air dropped close to freezing, the space inside the box stayed near the comfort of a mild spring evening, all without burning more wood, all without danger, and all without modern materials. Because the design relied on physics so simple it almost felt <clears throat> embarrassing that people had mocked it. Soon neighbors began asking questions, first quietly, then openly then with growing interest, because one father noticed his children slept better when they napped inside the box. One elderly woman found her joints hurt less in the morning, and another man realized he used nearly half the firewood he normally needed just to survive the night. The jokes stopped replaced by careful measurements, curious glances and requests for help building similar boxes, because when winter deepened and fuel became scarce, the difference between sleeping warm and waking sick could decide whether a family survived a season at all. Historians later documented that these bed boxes were not rare inventions but widespread solutions, especially in poor or remote regions, where fuel was precious and winters were brutal. And some families even built shared sleeping boxes where multiple children slept together, their combined body heat turning a wooden box into a living heater. But what made this story remarkable was not the box itself, it was the moment when tradition clashed with pride, when people laughed first and learned later. Because the man who slept in the coffin did not argue, did not defend himself, and did not explain the science. He simply slept warm, night after night, while others suffered and that quiet proof spoke louder than any explanation ever could. And yet, 
Just when the village thought they had learned the lesson, the box would reveal something even more surprising, something that would make people question how much of modern comfort is built on forgetting old wisdom, because the true power of the sleeping box went beyond warmth alone. As spring finally arrived and the ice began to loosen its grip on the land, the wooden sleeping boxes did not disappear because something unexpected had happened, something no one predicted which was that people realized they were sleeping better deep in the even when the cold was no longer deadly, because the enclosed space blocked drafts, reduced noise, and created a sense of safety that open rooms never had. Historical records show that box beds remained common in Scandinavia well into the 1800s, not because people were poor, but because they were practical, and in some regions, these beds became family heirlooms, carefully maintained and passed down, even as larger homes and better heating slowly made them less necessary. The man who was once mocked never became famous, never wrote anything down, and never claimed he invented something new, but his choice reflected a truth that history repeats again and again, which is that survival knowledge often looks strange until tested, uncomfortable until proven, and foolish until it works. Today, preserved box beds sit in museums, where visitors often laugh at how coffin-like they appear. Unaware that these designs once meant the difference between freezing and sleeping in warmth, between illness and health, between fear and rest, and modern survival experts now openly admit that the principle behind them is identical to high-efficiency sleeping shelters used in extreme cold environments today. The lesson is not that we should all sleep in wooden boxes, but that innovation does not always mean adding more, bigger or louder. Solutions because sometimes it means reducing space, controlling loss and trusting simple physics over social approval. And if you think about it, how many ideas today are mocked not because they fail but because they look wrong at first glance. Because the story of the coffin sleeping box is not really about a bed, it is about courage, humility and the quiet power of tested wisdom. So the next time you see an old solution that looks strange, Remember the man who slept 30 degrees warmer while others laughed in the cold, because history is filled with ideas that worked long before anyone understood why. If you found this story surprising, informative, or eye-opening, take a moment to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with someone who loves hidden history, because the past still has lessons left to teach us, and the next one may challenge something you believe right now, and in the next story, we will explore another forgotten idea that people once mocked, until it changed how they survived the harshest conditions on earth. After that winter, the village was never quite the same, because something small but important had shifted in how people judged ideas they did not understand. The wooden sleeping box slowly stopped being a joke and became a quiet standard in colder homes, especially among families who could not afford to burn extra wood every night. Carpenters began building them more carefully, adding small air holes, thicker panels, and softer linings, not because they wanted comfort, but because they wanted survival. Years later, travelers passing through the region wrote about these strange enclosed beds, noting how people slept behind wooden doors even in normal weather, and how children felt safer and warmer inside them. What once looked like fear now looked like wisdom. The idea spread quietly, not through pride or argument, but through results. As heating methods improved and houses grew larger, the box beds slowly disappeared. Not because they failed, but because people forgot why they were needed. Today, they sit in museums, often laughed at again by visitors who do not feel the cold those people once lived with every night. But the truth remains unchanged. That coffin saved heat, saved health, and saved lives. And history reminds us that many of the smartest solutions do not look impressive at first glance, they simply work when it matters most.